Kennedy at Holmes. A very warm welcome at the virtual platform, e-learning platform, this YouTube channel Lit E-City. And today we will going to discuss a very, very entertaining quiz on 20th century poetry. 20th century, a century where various genres like novels, non-fiction and poetry, they saw an emergence of different trends, experiments, movements, schools. Though it is impossible to cover all these things, but still in, the, in these 15 questions, I have tried to cover all the important schools, major poets. Uh, so let's uh, hope that this will give you an idea, a review about the major aspects of the 20th century poetry. So without wasting any more time, let's begin with our first question. This question says, this poet is best known as a key figure in the Imagist movement. I hope you all know Imagist movement which began at the early half or the first two decades of the 20th century. His own experiences of the atrocities of war resulted in the poems and images of war published in 1919 and his sense of disillusionment with the post-war England. The whole generation of the writers uh, who were uh, basically disillusioned with the results of the war, with the development after the war and this disillusionment can be witnessed in the autobiographical novel Death of a Hero published in 1929. Uh, options are first is Ezra Pound, second Richard Aldington, third F. S. Flint and the last one Ford Maddox Ford. Uh, these four writers, especially the first three writers are closely associated with the Imagist movement and the answer for this particular question, writer of this novel, Death of a Hero and the writer of the poems collected in Images in War is Richard Aldington. Dear friends, Aldington was not only a poet or a novelist, he also wrote a number of biographies and most famous biography. This is also important from that point of view. His most uh, uh, famous biography is that of uh, D.H. Lawrence. D.H. Lawrence, name of the biography is D.H. Lawrence Portrait of a genius but please also remember this uh, particular biography written by Aldington on D. H. Lawrence D. H. Lawrence portrait of a genius but okay moving to our second question this is one of the set questions which is generally asked in net exams matching columns so you have to match these two columns uh, regarding some very popular poems of the 20th century. On the uh, first side, we have a column first, we have name of the poem, Adel Stop, The Adoption Papers, Australia and Backpipe Music. In the second column, we have poets, A.D. Hope, Louis McNeese, Edward Thomas and Jackie Kay. Some of the poems are of the early 20th century, like Adel Stop. Some of them are of the mid-century, like uh, backpipe music. Some of uh, them are quite uh, late or uh, last decades of the 20th century, like the adoption papers. And Australia is a poem by a writer who is basically uh, Australian writer. And your options, this is the combination. Uh, without uh, uh, dealing with this, let me tell you briefly about the poems also. Adelstrop, it is a very popular poem in which the poet describes an unexpected stop at a particular station, railway station that, it, that is Adelstrop. And he describes the uh, scenic uh, beauty of England. The adoption papers, uh, it is, this poem is by, it is a very unique, a very experimental poem in which uh, the adopted uh, uh, baby and those who adopted uh, this baby, they all have their own uh, point of view presented by the writer. Australia, 
this poem is basically a condemnation of the australian uh, colonization and uh, we can say the lack of realization of indigenous people and bagpipe music this very very popular poem uh, it is a scathing portrait of the economically depressed scotland of the time uh, now if we talk about the writers adel stop it is basically it is uh, written by edward thomas adoption paper the poet of this poem is jackie k australia it is by ed hope and bagpipe music by louis mackney now you can find i think a for third b for this c option it is basically the right one and these all poems are very important one okay going to our next question uh the penguin anthology the new poetry which was published in 1962 is considered as a major statement on post war british poetry and a response to the movement the movement was also a school of poetry i hope you all know about this particular school of poetry philip larkin was at the head of this particular school it championed the extremist school introducing and promoting such key british poets like ted hughes and tom gunn who was the editor of this seminal collection now uh, uh, let me tell you that this new poetry it it basically inaugurated a new phase into english poetry and it was against the gentility principle gentility principle which according to this editor was introduced by philip larkin in the movement and uh, which which basically was about uh, a timid inauthentic and complacent uh, english expression rather it uh, uh, it promoted the the extremist school and basically this school this school was ab all about flash and all about uh, the inner instinct the basic uh, we can say feelings emotions uh, draw things so uh, let me give you options the the options are robert conquest uh, dj enright alfred alvarez alvarez or tom gunn now uh, before going to other right option let me tell you something about these things jaise robert conquest uh, he is the editor of famous uh, anthology new lines please remember these uh, all these uh, basically collections dj enright dj enright uh, he was basically a professor and a very famous book by him is memoirs of a mendicant professor and uh, he was embroiled in a controversy while he was in malaysia when he uh, gave a lecture robert graves and the decline of modernism then we have alfred alvarez and last tom gunn he is a poet answer my dear friends is alfred alvarez he was the the editor of this new poetry let me tell you one more thing about uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, editor alfred alvarez he was also writer of uh, this particular book the savage god please uh, pay focus or note down these things these are very important information the savage god which was published in 1971 and in this particular book he basically combined the fictitious elements memoir literary analysis in the in a study of artists suicide and it talks about silvia plath suicide and also his own attempted suicide uh, in the uh, 1961 so it's a basically uh, he is a very uh, you can say an uh, writer who focuses on the themes related with that particular period and he is responsible for making uh, ted hughes a popular poet in the in english Uh, intellectual world our next question dear friends is unless mirabilis 
published in 1974 is one of the major poems of Philip Larkin written in imitation of John Dryden's classical poem of the same title uh, which was published in 1667 which among these events is not celebrated in the Larkin's poem which ironically treats 1963 as a year of miracles okay uh, we know very well that Dryden wrote this poem Annus Mirabilis in 1667 and uh, basically uh, Dryden uh, wrote this poem about the great fire of London also the year of plague and still he presented an optimistic picture but Larkin on the other hand when he wrote this Annus Mirabilis it is quite uh, completely uh, in an ironic tone and he talks about certain things Uh, you have to find out which uh, among these uh, aspects he doesn't celebrate is it the end of the legal ban on dh lawrence celebrated and controversial lady chatterley's lover or is it about changes in attitude about sex and contraception because the pill the contraceptive pill was introduced the release of the beatles first long playing record and it changed the music scenario completely the lp the lp became one of the most innovative uh, music and that is why pop culture came into being or the end of cold war now obviously the first three options he talked about these things in this very popular poem annus mirabil and it is about the cold war that he doesn't talk in this poem okay moving on to our next question W H Arden is inarguably the most important poetic voice England has produced in 20th century. Uh Bilal has given some first lines of his popular poems and you have to match these uh, title with the poem. The line he disappeared in the dead of winter. Second, I sit in one of the dives. Third, stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone. And the fourth one about suffering they were never wrong the old masters very popular lines all these lines are very popular by arden and now the poems musi dubio arts september 1st 1939 in memory of wb yates and funeral blues let me tell you briefly September 1st 1939 it gives you an inkling that it was composed just before the beginning of second world war in memory of wb yates is one of the um, best or greatest uh, energy on a poet in 20th century music debut when uh, uh, when arden was visiting Bel- uh, belgium with uh, brussels with his uh, friend isherwood then he wrote uh, about uh, suffering and Finger Blues. It is one of the most popular poem. One of the most popular. So stop all the clocks. Cut off the telephone. It has been used in Hollywood movies, and it 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 has a status of a cult uh, song. The options uh, you can easily uh, let me give you an idea. Stop all the clocks, and this is. funeral blues this is most popular one and about suffering they were it, it is one of the most often quoted line by arden so now you can have idea it is c for fourth the there are two option and d first okay they now it is clear the answer is b so he disappeared in the dead of winter it is from in memory of wb yates and i sit in one of the dives september 1st 1939 one of the most important poetic voice of the present times his first book of poems zoom 1989 published was described as post modern post industrial and steeped in the culture of the last decade his other important works include zarado and kid in 1992 the dead sea poems in 1995 and a sequence of poems based around constellations which is entitled cloud cuckoo land who is this poet very popular works uh, all these uh, poems and uh, this basically uh, options uh, simon armitage david constantine david marley 
or Don Patterson, very popular writers of the, uh, we can say, uh, later decades of the 20th century. And uh, you must let me tell you about the uh, answer, about the answer. This particular poet has become the poet laureate on 10th May 2019. He is the latest uh, poet laureate of Britain. So it is on uh, 10th May 2019. I hope now you get the idea. It is yes of course Simon Amitiz. Uh, he, he has written these especially remember the sequence of poems based around constellations cloud cuckoo land. If we talk about David Constantine, his famous collection is Watching for the Dolphins. If we talk about David Marley, he is one of the editors in the Cambridge Introduction, Introduction to Creative Writing, a very popular work. And Don Peterson, he is editor of 101 Sonnets, 101 Sonnets from Shakespeare's to he, he is editor and God's gift to women. This is the name of collection by Don Patterson. Next question dear friends is Australia 1970 is a very important poem uh, in post-colonial canon. Addresses, it addresses two significant issues surrounding colonialism in Australia. The first one, the loss of the natural wilderness of Aboriginal land and second, the self-destructive ignorance of the colonialists. Who penned this remarkable poem? Options are A.D. Hope, Judith Wright, Dame Mary Gilmour or Banjo Patterson. Now, uh, Dame Mary Gilmour, these four, all four are Australian writers. A.D. Hope, he has also written a poem, slightly different title, Australia. Dame Mary Gilmore, her no foe shall gather our harvest. One of the earliest poem by an Australia, no foe shall gather our harvest. And Benjo Patterson, he is an Australian bush poet. He is also writer of Walzing Matilda Walzing Matilda it is known as Australia's unofficial national anthem but the right answer for this question Australia 1970 it is written by Judith Wright okay uh, next question what a joyful news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart divine burst. Jamaica people colonizing England in reverse. These are the opening lines of colonization in reverse, a poem that uh, ironically describes the immigrant Jamaican situation. Who is the poet of this highly popular Louis Bennett, Michelle Cliff, James Barry, or John Eggard? Now, this poet is also affectionately known as Miss Lou. Uh, she is noted as most important Jamaican poet of the 20th century. She writes only in Creole and the famous work by this writer is Jamaica Dialect Verses which was published in 1942. Without taking any time, it is Louis Bennett. Uh, also, remember writer James Barry, he who is also a Jamaican po a poet and editor of anthologies. Very important work. Please remember these words: Blue Feet, Blue Foot, Blue Foot Traveler, and News from. Babylon. These are two anthologies of black writing. Okay. Auden won the Pulitzer Prize uh, for this book, which features four characters um, of different backgrounds who meet in a New York City bar during World War II. What is the name of this particular book? Is it The Age of Anxiety, a Barack Eklav, The Shield of Achilles? Uh, for the time being or city without walls. 
uh, I would not take uh, much time for this because the book, this is very important book, the book is The Ace for Anxiety. This is a very popular work by um, Auden. Next question, dear friends, is who among these is credited for translating Beowulf in modern English, which was later published in Norton Anthology of Poetry in 2000? Your options are Shamas Heaney, W. H. Auden, Basil Bunting, or Carol and Duffy. Uh, we have uh, basically uh, seen that Beowulf is considered as the first important poem of English literature and uh, many uh, attempts have been made to translate it but this translation is considered to be the most authentic one because the poet has used typical uh, we can say alliterative mode of that particular time. Writer of this particular or translator we should say is Shamas Heaney. The Arrivals, a New World Trilogy by the Barbadian poet Edward Kama Brathwaite is considered as his greatest poetic achievement. It presents a, a spiritual journey into the past that ends in the third book with the promise of a new beginning. Which among these is not a part of this trilogy? Rites of Passage, Ex Oblique Self, Masks or Island. Now, dear friends, Edward Brethwaite, he is basically uh, known, very popular for his seminal work, History of Voice, published in 1984. And in this particular work, he coins a term, nation language. Let me tell you, this is going to be asked in the exam. These are some very important concepts. What is nation language? It is a term coined by Edward Brathwaite and it describes the work of writers from Caribbean or the African diaspora and written in non-standard English. And it is against the, uh, this term, nation language is against the term dialect, which is basically mark of inferiority. So, uh, this particular trilogy, it has uh, three uh, basically collections. First is rites of passage, second is masks, and third is island. So, our answer is X or oblique self. Next question, the 88 poems of this much talked about poetry collection by Ted Hughes almost entirely deals uh, with Hughes' complex relationship with Sylvia Plath, though it was published after, uh, we can say, 35 years of Plath's suicide. So, what is the name of collection? Wolf Watching, Moon Town, Rain Charm for the Duchy, or Birthday Letters. Now, we all know that uh, what a, we can say uh, un uh, unfortunate relationship uh, between Ted Hughes and Sylvia Plath, two of the greatest intellectuals of the 20th century. Uh, their marriage fails, uh, Sylvia committed suicide and the bells are published by Sylvia Plath and it gave rise to speculation that she was suffering from a failed marriage and many feminists uh, basically uh, accused uh, Ted Hughes for her suicide. Ted Hughes never mentioned anything openly about her relationship, uh, his relationship with Sylvia Plath, but it is in the later phase of his career. It was published uh, just few months before his death, and in this particular collection, uh, he captures his struggle to understand and explain his role in his relationship with Plath. It is basically set in a chronological order from their first meeting up to the their, uh, we can say, problem in the marriage. Um, this, this basically collection is birthday letters. Uh, let me here also uh, inform you, Motown, it is a poetic diary which details the everyday life of a working form. And uh, uh, Rain Charm for the Duchy, it was written during his tenure as a poet laureate of United Kingdom. Uh, he became poet laureate in 1984 and the poems in this collection celebrate royal occasions. In order to create a new poetic uh, idiom, 
video poetics. This term is also uh, related with this particular poet. This poet uses varying fonts and formats on computer to add visual and rhythmic emphasis to the sounds in the poetry. One such example is the poem Shah Hurricane poem that attempts to record the voice of the hurricane. Who is this poet? Is it James Barry, Sam Selwyn, Edward Kama Brathwaite or Grace Nicole? Uh, all these are very important, uh, we can say, diasporic writer. For example, Sam Selwyn, uh, he wrote very popular The Lonely Londoners. The Lonely Londoners, this novel published in 1956 and it, it uses creolized English or what we have seen nation language. Um, we are, uh, James Berry, he is also very popular. I have already, he is considered as the authentic, first authentic voice. But the writer of this poem is Edward Kama Brathwaite. He has his own computer. The name of his computer is Cyro, Psycho Rex and he uses uh, visual and rhythmic emphasis to um, basically add sounds uh, in the poetry. To When we read this poem Shah, we try to visually and orally sense the rhythm of the hurricane. So it's a, an experiment. Considered as an important vehicle for language poetry and avant-garde movement in American poetry. This journal was edited by Bruce Andrews and Charles Bernstein and put emphasis on the codes of language, uh, how ideas are represented and formulated to transmit idea, thought, meaning and political nature of language. In other words, we can say all the issues related with deconstruction and postmodernism. So these four are options. This, it is also name of uh, a journal. And in fact, it is first of such journals, Language, Toothpick, or the Grand Piano. Now, let me tell you something about Grand Piano. Grand Piano is written in collaboration by 10 writers. And it is written as a collective autobiography. On the other hand, this which was earliest of such journal and it is this particular uh, journal which was edited by Robert Granier and Barrett Watton. It later evolved into this journal which is our answer language okay friends last question for the time brick flats a long poem published in 1966 is regarded as one of the major achievements of the modernist poetic tradition in english it is a five part poem of nearly 700 lines combining a celebration of the northumbrian landscape of england poets meditation on history aesthetic reality and language the poet is Options are Basil Bunting, Louis Jokofsky, Ezra Pound or Allen Ginsberg. Okay, all these are very important poets. Louis, Louis Jokofsky, he wrote this very, very popular poem, A, which is once again a hallmark of modernist poet. Ezra Pound, we all know he is basically um, not only a sort of mentor of T.S. Eliot, but, but also he introduced imagism, imagist movement. Allen Ginsberg, he was related with Beats generation, also presented very radical ideas and Basil Bunting, he is the uh, basically writer of Brick Flats, a very important modernist poem. Okay, dear friends, these were some of the questions in this particular quiz. I have tried to include almost all the important aspects. There are many other important points, but it is impossible to cover them all in one particular quiz. I would try to have another quiz on the same topic so that I can include some more points. I wish you all the best for the upcoming exam. Please stay focused on all the important writers. Try to make your own notes. Thank you, dear friends.